You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. An open gate and an excited dog leads to an unplanned excursion for two horses. Find out how their adventure unfolds in this episode of Barn Stories. Welcome to the Barn Stories podcast. I'm Lori Prinz, editor of Equus Magazine. And I'm managing editor Christine Barakat. This podcast features our favorite essays and articles published in Equus over the past 40 years. Although Equus is known for articles on horse care and veterinary research, our editorial mission has always been guided by the bond that exists between horses and people. And each issue has featured a real life story that celebrates how horses enrich our lives and touch our hearts. We've searched our archives, chosen the stories that resonated with our readers, and given them new life in this audio format. Longtime subscribers may recognize some of their favorite pieces. And if you're new to the Equus community, these stories will confirm that no matter what sort of saddle you sit in, a deep emotional connection to horses is something we all share. I'll admit the first part of the story in this episode made me extremely anxious. Nothing makes my stomach sink quicker than seeing a horse trot through a gate that shouldn't have been left open. And just hearing that described was stressful. That's understandable. Bad things can happen when horses make an escape to unfamiliar and potentially unsafe surroundings. But I hope you kept listening because the rest of this story is an uplifting account of how a community came together to bring the horses home safely, despite challenging circumstances. I did listen, and I love that one of the heroes was a mom in the school drop-off line. You never know where you're going to find an undercover horse person. Let's listen to The Kindness of Strangers, written by Patricia Nolan and read by Taylor Autumn. I left the gate open. A mistake, for sure, but not as bad as it sounds. In all the years that I have cared for Smokey, my 12-year-old Morgan, he has never lifted his nose out of his morning hay until it was all gone. And my other Morgan, Ace, would never go anywhere without Smokey. So after I spread the hay over the snow-covered pasture, it wasn't unusual for me to leave the gate ajar as I went to fill the water buckets. On this day, however, Smokey looked at the gate and calmly walked through. We regarded each other quietly as I stood at the spigot just a few steps away. I wasn't worried. If Smokey went anywhere, he'd probably head either back to the pasture or into the barn. Then. My dog, Iggy, got in on the act. She's a mixed breed, but mostly a herding dog. And she knew Smokey was not supposed to be out of the pasture. She started barking like crazy until Don, my husband, came out of the barn to see what the commotion was about. Neither of us thought Smokey would wander off, but we didn't want Iggy to get underfoot and get hurt, so we both focused on calming her down. Suddenly, Ace was out too. And this really got Iggy going. Barking furiously, she began herding both horses away from the barn. But they didn't go back into the pasture. Instead, they headed up the only other route that had been cleared in the deep snow. A high-banked pathway my husband had made from the barn to the driveway. Before we knew it, Smokey and Ace were on the driveway and trotting out to our dirt road. And they just kept going. No one knows your horse's thoughts, emotions, and moods as well as you. Just as in touch as you are with their personality, Sentinel's expert nutritionists are in tune with their dietary needs. With feeds in the form of extruded nuggets to provide exceptional nutrition and formulas made for every life stage and activity level, Sentinel's wide choice of carefully crafted feeds makes it easy to find the perfect fit to better your horse's health. Learn more at feedsentinel.com slash health. That's feedsentinel.com slash health. Now I was afraid. I took off after them as soon as I realized they were heading toward the main road. But by the time I got there, they were out of sight. Traffic was heavy, with many parents and students heading for the nearby high school. And cars began backing up in that direction. So I was hurrying that way when I heard a noise behind me. My husband was driving our truck up the wrong side of the road. I climbed in, and we drove past all the stop cars until we spotted our horses, trotting straight down the road away from us. Then, a quick-thinking stranger saved the day. 
Up ahead, a driver had been just about to park his empty school bus, but instead, he backed it across the road, blocking it completely. Smokey and Ace paused, then turned up the school driveway. I got out of the truck, carrying the halters and bucket of grain Don had thought to bring, and headed after them. Then, the next great moment happened. A group of parents who were dropping off their kids got out of their cars and formed a human fence. They stopped the horses from going down to the lower parking lot, which would have allowed them to escape in almost any direction. Instead, Smokey and Ace continued toward the main entrance of the school. By now, a deputy sheriff inside the school had been told that there were horses in the parking lot, so he came out the front door. Spotting him, the horses paused. Taking the opportunity, I shook the bucket of grain. Smokey turned to look, so I poured some onto the ground, and to my immense relief, he came to get it. Ace followed behind timidly. I approached Ace first and put a halter on him, and one of the parents came forward. I'll take that, she said quietly, and I could tell she knew her way around horses, so I handed her the rope as I went to catch Smokey. Both horses seemed to know their adventure was over, and they followed calmly as we led them home. The snow was too deep to cut through the field, so we had to walk back up the main road. The deputy sheriff escorted us, driving behind with his lights flashing, to make sure we made it safely. Iggy was sitting in the yard, watching as we walked past. This time, she did not bark. We do not know any of the people who helped and they do not know us. But we will always be grateful. That day, they helped prevent what could have been a tragedy. And sometimes, it takes a village to round up two horses. Thanks for listening to Barn Stories. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have a favorite article or essay from the Equus Archives that you'd like us to feature in a future podcast, let us know. You can reach us at Equus Barn Stories, all one word, at gmail.com. Did you enjoy this episode of Barn Stories? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Thanks for listening. The Barn Stories podcast is a production of the Equine Podcast Network, an entity of the Equine Network.